Fue. <risa> Man, is it good to be out. So today is uh, Wednesday, June 20-something. Honestly, with the amount of time I've been off, I honestly don't know what day it is. Um, unfortunately, this is my last week before I have to go back to work next week. Uh, you know, after my surgery and everything, recovery has been going uh, excellent. So today brings us down to, or I should say up to, over to, however you want to look at, right here on the Northwest River Trail along the Susquehanna River. And today I'm not alone. I reached out to uh, Jay a little while ago and I told him that while I was, re after I recovered, I wanted to get back out and do some exploring and I wanted to bring him down to, and have us bring the scooters to the uh, Northwest River Trail and bring him up to the White Cliffs of Conoy. But we're here right at the Shocks Mill Bridge. I've been down this way before and this particular bridge that I'm walking under right now was built back in January of 1905 by the Pennsylvania Railroad and is a current active line utilized by Norfolk Southern. And like I said, not alone today. Now about a year ago, before I went to New York uh, on my vacation, I did fly uh, the drone over this and got some cool shots and actually flew through uh, the, uh, the openings there. Now one thing that if you ever do kayak down the Susquehanna River, I was just reading this on uh, before Jay got here, that some of these rapids right here are pretty dangerous going underneath the, uh, the bridge and people unfortunately have died here uh, getting sucked into the undertow and hitting the rocks and whatnot. So if you do any kind of whitewater type stuff, uh, just be mindful and be careful. But I believe this, uh, yeah, like I said, built 1905. Uh, it's just over uh, 2,200 feet long. And it is a dual line, I believe. Now where Jay and I parked uh, in order to come up here was, uh, I think it's called Riverfront Park. Uh, there's a pavilion there. They have a couple of grills. There's a playground, some uh, porta potties, and there's plenty of parking there. And they also have a boat launch there as well if you want to take, uh, take your boat out onto the river and do some fishing. But and yeah, that's such a cool, cool. I just, I love bridges like this. But not a bad day. I know I was, uh, we were getting spoiled there with tons of good weather over the weeks and we've had quite a bit of rain lately as well as a lot of weird overcast days like today you know but at least it's not raining today so that was uh that was one of the reasons i wanted to wanted to get out so i'm going to be taking jay up to or down to a place that i was at before when i did my meetup here um i brought kathy from uh, rustic ventures and all the all the folks that were with us that day down behind me to a uh, set of old blast furnaces that were actually part of a farm that was located here uh, right just down from this uh, uh, this old limestone mill that we're gonna see here in a little bit. Now the last time we were here when I saw this it was the winter time so it was a lot easier to see. Uh, it's like I said the end of June so it's gonna be uh, pretty overgrown but I think we should still be able to see uh, a decent amount. Yeah, that's right. I remember seeing an old foundation or something. Got some steel rivets there. Not sure what that was. Oh, yeah. Got a platform almost or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling our way through. So now that we're in here, narrow gauge rail coming through as structural support. Concrete. These are right here, kind of hiding from just feet from the outside there. Yeah, I almost didn't know where, try to remember where they were as we rode by on the bikes. You can't even see anything. Now, this time of year, it's obviously harder to see. Matt said he saw them in the winter time, it's much more visible. I don't know how far we're going to be able to go in because it is rather thick here. 
They get a nice shot right in here. And you look at just how good condition this brick is still is. This has got to date back to the early 1900s. I'm actually more fascinated with the little curvatures up there. Yeah. Not sure if they were just like, probably like the vents. I was thinking ventilation. <laughs> That's probably deer. Yeah. Wow. Spine and ribs and everything. Inside of it now. There's where we just wore. Have you been inside of this before? No, I've never been in. Check it out. Yeah. Oh wow. This is nuts. Yeah. That's so cool. Look at this, uh, like a steel plate here. Mm -hmm. It's like primarily brick. I like too, you can see it's like staggered. Yeah. Almost like a waterfall. Now that goes up, I want to see a good 15 feet. Yeah, I can't really get up into that one. That one's kind of collapsed there. But. Really cool to see, but definitely better to see during the winter. So here were your furnaces, and this is one of the things that we were talking about when we were here a couple years ago. You have this like room almost here, but this whole area, I'm wondering if this is where they loaded onto the cars. Yeah, this is something like a building or structure. It's just like a loading platform. Especially with the proximity of the rails, definitely. Oh, deer across on the tracks there. Well, here we are. You can hear Jay in the background there doing his intro. Uh, we made it down to the uh, White Cliffs of Kanoi. Now, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Kanoi or Kanoi, but it is named after the Kanoi Indians that originally settled this area, if memory serves me right. But what we're actually standing on, all of this right here, is actually limestone waste, and or it's a combination of limestone waste and dolomite from the uh, limestone mill that was across the railroad tracks there. Now I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, you know, the first time I saw it, I remember years ago looking on Google Maps, finding, trying to find places to explore. And I saw this along the Susquehanna River and I said, what is this big white outcropping? And then when I finally came down here, I uh, realized this is quite an interesting uh, oddity here of Lancaster County. Now to put it in perspective, you can see Jay there and just see how big this whole area is. Thing we come across is probably the least easiest. I'm like, hey, that's kind of fun. Let's go this way. It's like seven tubs without the water. <laughs> Pretty much. But this time I'm not going to go down on my butt. I'm going to try to keep on my two feet here. Definitely a pathway here, so it's pretty packed down, so I think it's going to be rather safe despite how it looks. It's actually not that bad. Oh, yeah, it's a little slick. <laughs> You weren't kidding, it's like seven tons. Yeah. All right, let me get the bag back on better because if I fall down, I'm going on that. Yeah, so it's really packed down, so it kind of gets slick. I should have brought my saucer with me. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm actually gonna put my camera away and try to get down this because after recovering from surgery, I'm pretty much back to full health, so, but I don't wanna take any chances and I wanna have two hands to, to guide myself down, so this should be fun. So we made it down to the bottom here. Uh, that wasn't too bad, actually. Yeah, I feel all right. Uh, these are, I wanna say, a good 30 feet up 
Well, you can see right along there all this uh, how this can just you know shear off over time any really bad inclement weather high winds will uh, just erode this whole whole thing away here but really peaceful down here alrighty well after uh, Jay and I got to see the white cliffs we came over to the other side of the tracks to check out the ruins of the actual uh, the actual mill here and this operated for quite a long time. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the total number of years, but I believe this was first constructed in eight, uh, the quarry operations began, I wanna say in 1847, and it went to the mid 1900s. So damn near a hundred year operation. And of course we got some, you know, tagging graffiti. It's pretty, pretty standard. <laughs> No. Oh, a big turbine almost. Yeah. Or a belt, uh, flywheel. Yeah, flywheel or belt. Not the internal of the spokes. Probably would have been a motor, especially a little gear on the back of it there. This is pretty cool. This is my first time actually on the inside of this side of the ruins here. And I do know there are some more ruins a little bit further down that we may be able to get to. But just look at all the uh, the debris here and all the twisted, you know, rebar, whatever it's called there. I feel like I need a tetanus shot just from standing here. <laughs> you can see the uh, big iron beams there. Really cool place. So right outside the ruins here, and we're gonna make our way down the uh, pathway here to check out some others uh, that are just off to our right. Thankfully, you guys are mounted on a really long selfie stick. I'm going to extend it out and hopefully give you a decently close shot at a snake that's hiding just over there. Yeah, he went under. Still see his body there. Yeah. Yeah, he's under that wood. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't go back into the woods. <laughs> I didn't even think about snakes. Why well, there's still more here to see. Right in front of us are these giant concrete arches, which depending on how you look at it, could be almost like a tunnel. Or back to see just how big this is but due to it being summertime you can't even hardly see it from the uh, rail trail so now it's even kind of more perplexing as to what this was Let's see. Let's see make that way up yeah 
here. Directly to the top of the wall here. So looking at this now, let's help us decipher what this was. So there's anchor bolts up here with some rebar. This looks really strong and screws, so I'm not really concerned about the collapsing. What do you think? Do you think something came across the top? That's the only way I can think because you have some rebar there. So like every every post you got some rebar. Either some kind of and like right to your right there, there's some more. Mm -hmm. I don't think that makes sense. This is heading directly to the river. So I'm thinking it was some kind of unloading station for stuff coming from the quarry across this and they would dump it into uh, some open hopper cars. Yeah, I have seen other structures uh, where for coal at least where they went across the tracks and there was like um, almost like a tipple of sorts or they even had like a piece of machinery, machinery that would load into the cars or even unload. But my speculation is something did come across here whether it was like a platform or some type of cars or equipment. Oh yeah, we can make our way to the shed. Here it is right there. Maybe probably like a maintenance shed or something. Yeah, daddy long legs. <laughs> This might have been a power room. Generator room? Yeah, there's insulators right here, so power of cables came through here. Oh, yeah. And all these holes kind of line up on the inside with the brown. And I wonder if they distributed power out to the... Yeah. This might be a power generation station. And more holes on this side, too. It's holding up quite well. It's like a bunker. Solid. Yeah. And they have this wood, but this is metal. <coughs> oh, look at the spider. Holy crap. Oh, that, that's a big... Uh... Wow. You want to pet it? Yeah. <laughs> See if I can get a... Yeah, I got to get a picture of that. <laughs> I don't mind them too much, but when they get that big, yeah. I start getting concerned. <laughs> well, Jay and I made it back down here to the pavilion here at the park where we uh, uh, parked our cars and uh, had a really great time going up to the uh, White Cliffs and seeing all the ruins and everything. And that was my first time going in uh, those actual ruins. But uh, I'm going to take him down to a little, uh, little place for lunch called Marco's. And then after that, we're going to check out another little place. Not sure if we'll do a video there or not, but anyway. Um, not sure if I'll do another video there or not. But uh, anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. And like always, we'll see you soon.